intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. Analyzing Patent Statistics for Business Decisions, Part 1. This presentation is brought to you by the IP attorneys and professionals at Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers through the Halsey Intellectual Property Technology and Invention Monitor website. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers. IP professionals for entrepreneurship's new golden age. This presentation is part of the Technology and Invention Monitor website's Legal and Business Issues and Instructions resource. Intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. Analyzing Patent Statistics for Business Decisions, Part 1. Let's begin the presentation. Now we're moving on to some analytical tools that have been developed that provide the ability to glean business intelligence, technological intelligence, and understanding of the financial relationship between quality patent documents and financial performance. Let's proceed. The typical use of the analysis tools for patents include the ability to, or provide the ability to gain a quick understanding of the results of a particular patent search that provides you with the ability to track competitive activity. Because of the time information, the date information that exists on the patent document, the analytical tools provide you the ability to identify certain market trends relative to technologies and relative to companies. And further, with the ability to refine research uh, results to zero in on what's most relevant within the particular patent document. In addition to some of the technical or document-based analyses that can occur through using the patent literature, there can derive from reviewing the patent documents certain unusual uses, and that includes building new business development a target list. I'll show you how to do that uh, based on the patent document, business in the intellectual property arena, uh, performing merger and acquisition or M&A due diligence, and understanding complex intellectual property portfolios of companies in the area of due diligence or otherwise, and then to identify the potential of an infringement, or at least give you the analytical tools from which you can identify in the 7 million approximately uh, patents that exist in the U.S. patent base, uh, the ability to identify potential infringers of a particular patent that might be of interest to you. The tool that I'm going to use is a product of the Thompson database or information uh, company. Thompson is known uh, throughout industry as a resource for all types of legal and technical information. The tool that I'm going to show you uh, derives from their Delphion branch. A little history on that. Uh, some years ago, 10 or more years ago, uh, IBM Corporation provided to the world via the internet the what's known as the IBM patent database. The IBM patent database provides uh, provided a robust tool that IBM used and made available to everyone who wanted to go to the IBM patent website. The ability to search using a number of, of ways of presenting data also provided uh, access to patent documents, both text and uh, PDF documents that could be used, images by uh, persons subscribing or, or, or becoming using the IBM website. Uh, somewhere along the way, sometime along the way, IBM, in recognition of the opportunity that the website provided as a potential standalone business, uh, the website was spun off into a company called Delphion. Delphion, in the middle of the dot-com uh, bubble, decided to become an independent company and provided the same website. Actually, the functionality has not changed a great deal from the original IBM offering. Some additional uh, features, and we'll go through some of, little, some, some of those features. Uh, the Delphion uh, was su subsequently acquired by the Thompson uh, Company and today provides, through the Thompson Company, the website, the, the analytical tools that I'll be describing here. So this is, this is a tour through that uh, website, that service, it's a, and it's a service that has a number of different uh, ways of, of, of paying for access to 
the, the search engine. One, you can provide, you can purchase a day pass for a certain amount, I believe it's $25 or something like that. Or you can provide, or then you, you can acquire for either a monthly fee or an annual fee, uh, various levels of service from the website. And the level of service determines what type of search or analytical tools you have access to. And we'll talk, and we'll discuss what those tools are. I won't go into the pricing or the modeling. That's not the purpose of this presentation. The purpose of this presentation is to make you aware of a, of a tool that could be useful in the event that you need or desire to have patent information, patent demonstration that goes beyond the functionality of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office website. So I'll provide to you through this uh, teaching uh, a number of examples of how one might use the, what I'll call the Delphion website, and obtain from that website information that can go from the basic uh, document information that appears in the patent document to information that's useful for performing certain business functions or certain information uh, gatherings for decisions. And so let's begin with case one. Case one uh, is, is one where a, a, a law firm desires to build a prospect list of, of clients. The situation is that a business development manager at a law firm, this might be a partner, uh, is looking for new prospects in that attorney's area of expertise. And so what that person would do in such an example would be to search for all patents filed by a specific attorney. Why? Because if you know what the skill set is of a particular attorney, you can translate that into an area of particular interest, a particular patent attorney. So for example, an area that I have a significant amount of experience in is semiconductor technology and aerospace technology. And if I were, uh, if, if you performed a search where my name might appear, you would possibly find patents that relate to semiconductor technology or maybe software or maybe aerospace technology. Or, uh, and now one of the things that is important to know is that oftentimes in private practices, the, the name of a particular attorney won't show on the, the face of the patent document. And instead, the name that you see will frequently be the name of the attorney working inside the company for whom responsibility of that particular patent or that particular area of patenting uh, would, would take place. Uh, for example, if Joe Jones is a patent attorney for the IBM Corporation, he may have uh, as many as 50 or 100 patent attorneys working for him as outside patent preparation counsel. That outside preparation counsel will prepare and file documents. Joe Jones, however, within IBM Corporation, as an example, would have responsibility typically for defined areas of technology. And so determining that if Joe Jones is a person whose skill, whose area of expertise is an area where you want to develop a particular client base, this particular process that I'm taking you through will identify for you other companies, other uh, areas, uh, classifications, where you might find the ability to uh, you might have the ability to identify new prospects for providing your service. Now, this is just as to law firms, but I think you'll see that this applies to other uh, areas of technical expertise, consulting expertise, engineering design expertise, and so just the idea of a prospect for law firms, that concept goes, goes well beyond that. So with this understanding, you would go, the, as the next step, use what's known as the snapshot feature of the Delphion website to reveal the most common international patent classifications in the set for that particular attorney. And then you would search by the top numbers of international patent classifications that are found in the snapshot view, and then use the snapshot view to identify the top assignees in a particular set. I think you'll find this to be very, very interesting. And I'll show you as we go through the screens what I'm doing. So to begin, when we go to the Delphion website, uh, you'll find that the, uh, and you can go to Thompson Delphion, search in Google and get the, uh, get the URL. Uh, but when you want to perform a particular search, the first thing that you do in going to the Thompson 
website is to click on this uh, research and you may want to click on identify your account, uh, establish your account. Once you've done that, then you can go to what's known as the advanced search page. This advanced search page provides you with the ability to make certain menu choices and from these menu choices have the ability to uh, enter particular fields that are of importance to you. There's a, uh, uh, there's a, uh, a way of getting into the query language which gives you the types of fields that, that are important. There's the search button, clear of course would be that. Then select the collection. As you can see, we have collections from all over the world. You have the U.S. granted and U.S. applications, granted patents and patent applications, granted European patents, granted or, and, and published European patent applications. So granted U.S. patent, I mean granted uh, European patents and published European applications. The WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, PCT publications, and then further English as abstracts of Japanese patents, and then interna international patent documents from a number of patent offices from around the world. So it's a, it's, it's a large, there are about 33 million, 34 million documents that this patent website provides access. Uh, and so for the U.S. European Patent PCT, you can search the front pages or you can search the full text. And then for the international patent docu documents, this provides a pull-down menu and you can just simply click the country that you're interested in. The publication date would be either the publication date for the published patent application or which would be either the PCT publication or the European patent application or the U.S. patent application. The date that the abstract might be published or when you go to other countries, the international patent documents provide you with the year, the month, and the date. Um, and you can also specify a range from and to, uh, as you might, uh, everyone sees this type of thing when you go to a, uh, uh, one of the travel uh, orbits or travelocity, giving you the ability to take the type of, 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 of date and year. Now on the same page, there are fields such as attorney, agent, or firm, where you can, you can bring that in. Uh, as, and these are examples down here. And related applications, you might, uh, you might do a particular number search by putting in the number and the website provides you with the rules the way that these numbers should be uh, provided. And then for international search fields, the international patent classification code, we talked about the domestic, but remember on the face of each U.S. patent, you have both the U.S. and the international patent classification codes. And then filing date and other information. So with this, here I have identified the name of an attorney by the name of Judith uh, Bioric. This is an attorney I know who operates, who, who has expertise in a particular area of technology. So I'm putting this information in and what come, clicking on search and the website provides a result of a search query of Judith Bioric as an agent this is the Boolean translation for the field that we put in. Uh, it, we've not specified any particular dates. We put her name in, and then we've identified the particular uh, databases that we're looking at. And right now, we don't need a full text search. We just need the front page. And so what's come from this work, from all of the searches, all the databases that we've used, we've pulled from the uh, databases the databases that we've identified, 326 patents for which Judith is named on the face of the patent. These patents are listed below and note that the listing provides uh, a relevance score, the date of publication. It provides you with a PDF document that you can download as the PDF for the particular, uh, for the particular patent and then a hypertext link that will take you to a page that we'll describe in a few minutes that provides even further information relating to this particular patent. This is a U.S. patent and the patent number is 6590082 and that's that particular patent. So we already have a good bit of information from the database by just putting this attorney's name in. Now then we go to a, a, a powerful aspect of the uh, Delphion website known as Snapshot. And what Snapshot does is provides you a way to summarize the results of the search. Here I have 
Again, 326 searches, and I can summarize by fields such as inventor city, inventor state, inventor country, uh, international patent classification code uh, as the four digit, or I can use the full, remember, with the patent classification codes, there's the primary and the secondary. I can summarize by that. Uh, I can summarize by publication year. I can sort by item count. You'll see what I'm, I'm selecting. Item count is a way of sorting the results of these 326 patents. I can dis, uh, show how I want to display this information, and I can determine. Uh, here I have 326 uh, matches, so I just need to do the first uh, 500 item, uh, uh, items. And so I'm ready at this point. I'm ready at this point to take these 326 patents and turn, begin turning them into some intelligence using the snapshot function. So once I've done that, then I click on the summarize function. And here I have summarized as a function of uh, here the snapshot function and the, the item count by international patent classification. The attorney's name, Judith uh, Byrick, as the agent, by item count, by single column. And I've also displayed, I have the ability here to display uh, a minimum count of two, a maximum uh, number of, of rows shown as to ten. And so this is exactly what I've done. I've done one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I've shown ten rows as per this parameter. Uh, minimum count, here's two. So anything less than ten, because I've limited it to ten rows, uh, is not shown. I can show as many as there are. Now what this has done is taken those 326 patents and turn them into those patents for which uh, the international classification codes are listed on the face of the patent. Here I have, as, and I'm sorting, I've sorted it as to item count. So based on that simple search of Judith Byrick, I have now a list of the top ten international classifications for which she's named as the patent attorney of record. And here we go. I have 96 patents in the international classification C09D, 95 in the classification G03G, and such. And this listing also provides a, uh, a definition or description of what that particular international classification is. And so from that, we see that 22% of the patents that are searched list this particular classification as um, on the face of the patent, the next classification, 20, another 22.1 percent. Now remember, uh, on the patent document, there will be more frequently more than one uh, classification, so the total number of patents may exceed the 326 number that uh, we, we have, but not necessarily. It depends on how many of these classifications appear on the front page. Note also that this 96 is in blue. Well, the fact is that's a hyperlink, and once you click on that, you receive a listing of all of the patents that, for which Judith Byrick is the patent, listed patent attorney or patent agent, and uh, the international classification is that of C09D, which corresponds to chemistry, metallurgy, chemistry, uh, etc. Now, from, from this, we can take the next step and copy simply this international classification. Copy this international classification, and for this attorney who has expertise in this particular area, we can take this international classification and do a search in this database area of uh, the granted U.S. and published U.S. Uh, patents and patent applications and European granted patents and published patent applications. Um, we want to limit it in time to 1993 and later, uh, just to make the search uh, valuable. And then we can show in the search results the title, uh, the, the relevance score, the publication date. And here we can sort by score uh, those patents that have this as the uh, classification. We can limit the number of items per page to 20 or 50 or 100, whatever we may uh, particularly want. Let's see what this search result gives to us. All right, so here, in this classification, in the databases that we searched, now we've been able to determine that 
18,940 patents have been issued in areas of relevance to the skill set of Judith Byron. Interesting, interesting result. So now let's go back into the snapshot uh, search and, and see what we can glean from, from that information. Let's click back on the snapshot and from this, let's go into the ultimate company. Essentially, when a patent application is filed, um, the company will be listed and as it uh, works its way through the patent office to be a, a final patent or thereafter, the company, the asset name will change. This database, the Delphion Bay database, has the ability to uh, access the patent office assignee files and determine where the, uh, how this, the, this information has changed over time and uses, uh, as the ultimate company, the, the ability to, to take that information and, and use it for the benefit of, of the user. So now, here we are in snapshot. I want to take these 18,940 patents and turn them into something that I can use. So I'm going to try to summarize based on item count, uh, based on single column, and all items up to 20,000. That'll work. Uh, and then now we're going to summarize these documents in the next screen. And here we go. Within that, now I have, I've still limited myself to a uh, minimum count of two, maximum list of these 10. And so I have found in the snapshot view, a number of companies that are pursuing or have pursued areas of technology relevant to the skill set of this particular attorney, Judith Byron. And that includes Xerox, HP, Canon, Seiko, Eastman Kodak, uh, BASF, DuPont, Bayer, uh, not unified. I'm not sure what that uh, particular, uh, that would be something that, that's not unified or not ultimate company. And then looking for some, uh, this would be an international patent, the uh, AstraZeneca uh, PLC. But here we go with a potential prospect list that is relevant to the skill set of this particular attorney, Judith Byrick. Now I have, from, from this work, the ability to go to the relevant contact persons within these companies and say, I have this as a uh, particular skill set. I've determined that I based on the research that I've done, that if I'm Judith, for example, uh, that I can potentially provide you with services. I want to, I want to make you aware of these services and uh, of either Judith or the group or relating to Judith, and from that point be able to, uh, to more efficiently target the prospects that I would approach in the marketing and sales of the legal services that Judith might provide, or Let's say that you're an engineer and Judith's area of technology is your, uh, likewise, your area of technology. If, no, if you know Judith to be uh, a, an expert in that particular technology, you as the engineer or you as a, even a business person uh, with a uh, skill in that particular industry segment can use this information to identify potential targets where you would apply uh, your skills and, and your interests. Uh, so that's, that's case one. Now case two is, takes this information and, and moves us to a uh, more analytical approach, and that is to, to analyze for the possibility of a, an M&A transaction, a merger or an acquisition transaction. Let's look at the section, second scenario. This scenario is one where an analyst needs to perform due diligence on acquisition targets. Companies with which the uh, employee of one company might find an uh, interest in, uh, might find a potential company to acquire. Let's look with that type of basic understanding in case one, let's see if we can take that understanding of how this uh, website, how this resource might be used and, and, and take it to another level. From the specs, uh, for this example would be the validation of a company Novin uh, drug delivery technology expertise. Okay, so here I want to find out I have a company by the name of Novin, and I'm trying to find out what I can about their particular expertise in the event that they would be a uh, viable acquisition target. So uh, a first step for this process would be to perform as an assignee search for the acquisition target, and then cluster the results, and then from that point, review the specific patents in the cluster 
to determine the quality of those patents uh, in a, uh, from a, a qualitative assessment. Let's go back to the main search page on the Delphine website and begin looking at, here we want to limit our search because that will probably give us the most relevant information uh, and perhaps a, a meaningful set of granted U.S. patents and published U.S. patent applications. I don't necessarily want to limit it by any years. Uh, front pages will be just fine. Then I can also, in the research results, show the title, uh, the relevance score, and the publication date. And let's see what I uh, then want to, to, to uh, move on to. Let me just take you back for a second here. This corporate tree, now this is a relatively new function compared to the earlier uh, IBM database, but if you click on corporate tree, what you find is the ability to put in a field here, Novin. And, and, and so what this corporate tree does is give you the ability to uh, determine from the assignee records, the original assignee, any hierarchy relating to the companies. Are they, is Novin a parent or a subsidiary company? And of course, the cancel out function to take you back to the main search page. So here I have, uh, once I've clicked on the original assignee, I have, as you see in many trees, the ability to expand or collapse. And I get from this search, Novin Pharmaceuticals, there are approximately 30 patent documents in the databases that I've identified that list as an assignee Novin Pharmaceuticals. So I can click on this and then click on the Save function. This takes me back to the main search page. Actually, I'm moving now into the Boolean uh, page. The Boolean allows me to, incidentally, the, the, the Boolean allows me to identify particular fields and do a, a logical and or logical or uh, a function and string things, uh, search terms together. Now what's happened as I've gone from the corporate tree, putting in the term Novin, I've clicked on save and what shows up is the assignee code that is related to, or the patent office has assigned to Novin Pharmaceuticals. So based on this assignee code, I can now perform a, a, another relevant search. So now I'm, I'm clicking on search, and for this assignee code, this, uh, which includes Novin and all the subsidiary companies so that we, all of the 30 companies that were identified in that corporate tree search, I've received these results. I have 35 matches with this assignee code from the database of granted patents and published applications, patent applications from the U.S. database. And this is what, uh, this is wh where we are with this. And so the, again, the, the, the list is here, uh, providing the ability to add to this, uh, to, to manage this list with the click on uh, boxes to download if we desire the PDF document or hyperlink to the, uh, the integrated page for that particular patent, or here we have, look at this, this uh, US 200301526161A1. That is not a patent. That's a published patent application, as it contrasted to below the US 6562363. That's a, uh, that's a US uh, patent, published, uh, issued patent with the US, the 2003, indicating, of course, the year in which the document was published along with the title and the publication date and such. So with this information, uh, we can go into this function called clustering. Now clustering is an analytical tool that uh, is in the area of what's known as bibliometrics. And what they do, uh, what the, the clustering algorithm does is go through each of these documents in this list and create uh, sets of, of, of documents that appear to be related to one another simply on the statistical uh, relevance of the statistical occurrence of certain words in the documents. And so here in this clustering, within this company code, this 40993, again that goes to the Novin company, uh, I've identified the desire to have 10 clusters, just as an arbitrary number, but something I can manage and get some information from, based on the 35 uh, matches that came from 
this this database of the uh, of, of the patents and, and published applications. So now I do this analysis. This analysis provides me with the ability to see that of the ten clusters, I have these descriptive words that appear in the patent document. And so in cluster one, which is the most populous, and two, the most populous of the of the groups, these words appear in the patent document. And so there's six of these patents that have these words, and cluster one, cluster two would be would also see these words. And so of the ten clusters, the final cluster would just be a single patent, a tenth for which and, and nine two, for which there's just not a relation uh, back into to these uh, these other patents. What I what I'm able to do at this point, which is kind of interesting, is take here I have a table of uh, of an understanding with this. If I read these clusters, I can get an understanding of the areas of emphasis of the Novin companies, such as pharmaceutical agent, for example, uh, attention deficit disorder, and these are just taking the words out of the patent document and trying to make some, in an automated way, trying to make some intelligence uh, uh, results occur by the correlation of these particular words and the correlation of patents that contain these types of words. And we end up with a set of information that has uh, the ability to get a flavor of what this Novin company is, is about. And then we have the ability, based on this list, to take it one step further and see correlations from these groups of patents. And so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've shown this map of these clusters, uh, not ten that show up, but, but the, uh, uh, the, the, the nine here. And each one of these clusters relate to the list on the previous page. So uh, we're able to see with these words the, the connections Connections in what way? Well, we're able to make cross-correlations between patents in one group and patents in another. As we see these correlations, we see a, a higher correlation with, for example, this group to a, a broader number of patents. Here we have just one patent in this group of three that relates to uh, this, this group here. And from this, this looking of uh, these connections between the patents, here's another observation perhaps, and this group number five where there are two patents, we see connections to one, two, three, four, five different patents, and then through this group further, uh, connection potentially to, to this group, uh, start to see relationships among the different groups of patents. And so we're seeing in this, this uh, bibliometric uh, measuring of the, the